Like many children, Catherine Drexel and her sisters started receiving an allowance once they reached a certain age. A couple hundred dollars a month at that time was a very large sum. And one of the first things she did was supply a statue to a, one of the Indian missions. She learned that from her mother that it's about giving away what other people need to have. Her stepmother, Emma, died in 1883 after a battle with breast cancer. Her father really never recovered from his wife's death. And it was at that point that Catherine started telling Bishop Joseph O'Connor that she wanted to be a nun. He was like her spiritual director and very close to the family. Before being named Bishop of Omaha, O'Connor had been the priest of St. Dominic's Church near the family's summer home in Torsdale. He did not seem to, to favor her going into the convent. She said, no, I'm called to do this. And he said, absolutely, you're not. Bishop O'Connor argued her money would be better spent as a charitable lady of society. Society. And two years later, when Catherine's father died, she and her sisters were suddenly staggeringly rich with an estate valued at nearly $16 million. She could have done anything she wanted to do. Her father left 10% of his fortune to charity and split the remainder among his three daughters with built-in protections against fortune hunters posing as suitors. As long as the three girls lived, they received $1,000 a day on the interest of the money and that's how they did their work. All three shared a devotion to the needs of African Americans. Catherine was moved by the plight of Native Americans as well. Remember, I mean, this is the time of the great massacres, the genocide of the Native American people. The sisters donated an altar in memory of their parents to the Cathedral Basilica and founded an industrial training school for orphan boys in Eddington, named for their father. I went through St. Francis Vocational School. I had several brothers that went through it also. But Catherine was devastated by the loss of her father. She fell apart. She was in despair. So the sisters took a trip to Europe to help Catherine get over her grief. While there, she had a meeting with Pope Leo XIII that would change the course of her life. She had already started her work supporting the Indian missions. She was pleading with the Holy Father to somehow make priests available. And he said to her, well, why not yourself be a missionary? Bishop O'Connor, originally resistant, not only agreed, he insisted she start her own religious order, the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, with a focus on society's most oppressed. It was very obvious to her that people saw a major difference because of skin colors. Because she was so famous in Philadelphia, she was sent to the Sisters of Mercy in Pittsburgh for her novitiate. She could have given her money, and that would have been wonderful, but she literally gave away herself. It was a hard life. She gave up everything and she'd been raised with absolutely everything. The mother house in Ben Salem was built in the Spanish mission style, and Catherine kept up a steady flow of funds to schools and parishes in the West. When you hear someone having billions of dollars, you know, personal finance, you say to yourself, well, what do you do with all that money? And Catherine would say, here are the needs, do this, this, and this. For African Americans, she built Holy Providence boarding school on the grounds of the mother house. Four generations of my family went to school here. And she opened opened missions and schools throughout the segregated South. The idea that you were starting a school for blacks, number one, not my neighborhood, and number two, don't educate them. She never let anything stop her from doing anything what she knew what was right. She used straw buyers to purchase new properties. She couldn't buy it in her own name. They wouldn't sell it to her if they knew that's what it was going to be used for. One of her schools in Beaumont, East Texas, the KKK posted the school threatening to burn it down. Her aim was evangelization and education. Saving souls is part and parcel of social justice. She created Rock Castle, a boarding school for girls on a former slave plantation in Virginia. But her jewel was Xavier University in New Orleans. It's the country's only historically black Catholic university, and among HBCUs, it ranks among the top in graduates who go on to careers in medicine, the sciences, and judgeships. And on its construction, Mother Catherine spared no expense. Xavier, she wanted to be built out of Indiana limestone. Because, she said, the students there should have the best, but she took her own vow of poverty very seriously. She would actually take the pencils away from the students, give them new pencils, and use their used pencils. Her shoes had holes in them. Multi-millions of dollars of money in the family, but she wanted to be as poor as she could be. But she was always a banker's daughter. She knew how to get things done, 
and she knew how to handle money. She would have been able to tell you exactly how many schools, how many students, how much everything cost. And she was a hands-on hard worker. She was constantly visiting her missions throughout the country. She would open up new missions personally. This woman never slowed down. She never stopped. She set a high bar for all of us now. We don't all make it. <laughs> but she gave her total gift of self. When she wasn't adding schools and missions, she was working in other ways, lobbying newspapers to stop identifying the race of African-American suspects and partnering with the NAACP to push for anti-lynching legislation. She was little but mighty. <laughs> There was a fire in her, and we need people on fire like this today. For St. Catherine's Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, the mission continues. After teaching students in rural Louisiana and Harlem, New York, Sister Lynn Marie Ralph is now Director of Education at St. Martin de Porres in North Philadelphia. Mass is at 10 o'clock every Sunday, and I promise you, you will be blessed. Sister Donna Breslin helped start a Meals on Wheels for seniors in Louisiana, served the Puebla people in New Mexico, and many for 12 life-changing years in Haiti. We had many children who were malnourished when we first came down there. And uh, after four or five years, uh, people in the community would say, our children used to go to the cemetery but now they go to school. I just returned from Jamaica. Sister Faith Okerson taught in Atlanta during the civil rights era, then went to St. Ignatius in West Philadelphia, one of four historically black parishes in Philadelphia. All four were heavily funded by the Drexels. She and the sisters mean so much to me. Dr. Trudy Brown went to school at Holy Providence. Here I am at 25 with my grandmother. Her grandmother, Julia, was among the first students when the school first opened in 1892. Whatever accomplishments I've made in my life, it's been because of the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament. And I feel so blessed. It, this is history. Even before Catherine's death in 1955, at the age of 96, the calls for canonization had already begun.